Hello there everyone. Today we're going to take a closer look at the distance marker label that shows up when you click on a person. Uh, we're also going to look at inserting some symbols and we're going to compare inline and this stack type of layout and some of the kind of positives and negatives of each type. This video follows on from part one which I've linked below in the uh, information section so I'll assume that you already know the basics I covered in that video. Now for the purposes of the edits we're about to make we need to turn on the Alliance and Corporation labels in the overview settings. You may already have these on, I'm just using the kind of uh, modified default overview uh, from the end of the last video. So I've added those two columns as visible in the column section go to MISC and export my overview again. So as I said in this video we're looking uh, primarily at the distance marker here. You'll see it displayed after the last thing that you have enabled on your ship labels. So in my case it's displaying here after Alliance. If someone's in a corp and not an Alliance then it will display after Corporation. And if someone's in an NPC corp, it will just display it. It doesn't actually display the NPC corp at all. So most people have their labels in the order corporation and then alliance, as I have here. And that presents us a little problem because the modifier tag is after the last displayed item in our labels. It's in the post section, in this case of alliance. So if someone isn't in an alliance, then it won't show the modifications we've made to our distance marker. So I'm going to load up a, a custom overview with a distance marker on it. And I'll show you how it is affected by people being in corporations or NPC corporations. And then a couple of the workarounds we can use to make it display properly in all cases. Okay, so back in our text editor, uh, we know that in my case Alliance is the last shown label. I don't have ship name or null enabled. So the modification needs to go in the post section of Alliance last displayed. So the first thing I want to do is create a line break. So that's BR. I then want a space put in distance, if I can spell properly, distance, dash, and I want a closed bracket, ampersand gt, semicolon. We'll save that and see what it looks like in game. So now if we look at a character who's in a corporation and an alliance, We'll see distances on its own line now. Yeah, we've got our little symbol here and then the distance is red. But if we look at someone who's in a player corporation but not in an alliance, you'll notice the distance marker appears completely unaffected by our modifications. So let's have a look at a couple of the workarounds for this. So the first workaround we can try is to copy the distance marker and its break. And if we insert that incorporation as well in the post section, save that and so it's in the ships column. We need to tick hide corp ticker if pilots is in an alliance. And now if we look at someone in an alliance, we have our modified distance marker there. And if we look at someone in a player corporation, we also have our modified distance marker there. Now, unfortunately, NPC corporations, because the label isn't red at all for an NPC corporation, 
uh, it doesn't read the modification to apply it to the distance marker afterwards. So there is a, a separate workaround we can use for that. So the second workaround we can do is to get rid of this out of the alliance label altogether. And if we swap the alliance and corporation order so that the alliance name comes first if a player is in one and the corporation comes afterwards if the player is in one if you've t chosen to display both of them. Now because we've got hide cork ticker if pilot is in an alliance we won't see a difference in the behavior here. It will only ever either show us an alliance or a corporation. And now with our edit still in corporation if we go ahead and save again re-import now if we look at someone in an alliance it displays correctly someone in a player corp displays correctly and still our enemy the NPC corporation because it never reads the label it will just never never actually display an edit for that part there is one final workaround you can use if the order of sh these labels isn't uh, critical to you and you don't have to have the corporation and alliance uh, as the last things if you have for instance the name of the pilot their corporation and alliance and then below that their ship type if we were to put the label uh, the, the modifier for the distance marker in the ship type section it will always display correctly regardless of someone's corporation status uh, because that is not the last red label. So if we look at the example of another overview of mine here I just inserted the distance marker where we had it last time after Alliance but because the order of the labels is different you see it displays in the middle here it doesn't actually apply to our, our distance at all so if I go ahead and copy that, or cut that, and I want to insert it after ship type here. I'll save that again. Now see we've got our modified distance here. Now because of the order I have this in, with name, corporation, alliance, and then the ship type, we see someone in alliance here, it displays. Uh, it will also display even for someone in an NPC corp because their corp status is irrelevant to the last label being read. So it's it's very important that you get that order right. So one more thing we're able to do is insert uh, symbols. We don't just have to use standard characters. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm also going to tidy up this little distance marker here. You see it's not quite in line with the, the others. It's worth bearing in mind that a larger character will also create a larger space. So if you use different size characters for the different rows, you may have issues getting them to perfectly align. So if we look, I think that's probably two spaces to get that in line with the other labels. So I'll add those now. And then with alt codes, all you really need to do is hold alt and type the number that corresponds to the code you want. I have a, a website I'm using here. Uh, I'll link it below. Uh, there are many others. So I want to hold alt and then type 1 and 6 and that will give me a nice blocky arrow. So I'll save that. And now our distance marker is pretty much in line. And we've got our small blocky arrow. So we can do uh, some fairly extreme modifications using the symbols. You can insert them all over the place. You can really divide up the, uh, the labels, make it a lot easier to differentiate the information you're being fed. Especially if you have it all in the same color, like some people like to do.
So as you can see here, when you have a stack type layout, it does affect the way notifications appear in space. Um, this can become quite a mess if you PvP a lot, especially in fleets, and there are multiple people activating warp scramblers at the same time. The, the whole area here of notifications just kind of turns into a bit of a mess. Uh, it's fair to say that this will never be a problem for you if you mostly PvE or do industrial or other activities. It's really only the notifications you see of uh, warp scrambler activations that will uh, become messed up by this. One way you can get around that is maybe to just have uh, two columns, or two rows I should say, uh, and then the, the layout doesn't appear to be too visually impaired. The more you stack these labels, uh, the more they'll overlap in space when someone scrambles someone else. So if you like to have this stack type layout, you can actually turn the notifications off or move them out of the way entirely. Uh, and you can just open the uh, notification log instead in its place. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a few more edits, uh, just tidy this up a little bit, insert some more symbols, make it a, a little more stark and contrasting. So I think one thing I actually want to do is bring this distance marker back up online with the ship type. So firstly I'll get rid of that line break, and one of the spaces. Now something we can do is if we omit to close the font size tag and cut that out, the font size will continue to apply essentially to the rest of the labels, but because this is the last label displayed, it will continue to affect the distance. So for pilot name, I found a symbol of a skull and crossbones. I'll copy that in, that's going to be our pilot name notifier. Now for corporation, I'm going to copy in a copyright symbol. And for the ship type, instead of flying, I'm going to have a symbol of an aeroplane. So we'll remember to pay attention to our spaces. So I want one space after the aeroplane, space after the pilot name, and for the corporation. So we'll save that, see what we've got. So there we go, as I said you can insert the symbols, but they largely seem to be unaffected by the size of the text. I have it. So actually, I think the distance marker now looks too big in its white text here. And I'm going to make that just a little bit smaller. So where we took out that closing tag, which will be after ship type. So we took out the end of font size. So we're going to reinsert that. And then we're going to copy another font size in front, but just slightly smaller. So if we go for 14, we'll go for the same size as the pilot name. Save again. And there we go, looks a bit tidier now. Now you might notice that here all my symbols are the same colours as the information that is displayed with them. But there's no reason that needs to be the case. You can have contrasting colours between these things. So I'll just demonstrate that quickly. So let's take the colour of the ship type here and apply that colour to the symbol before the pilot name. So here we have the pilot name colour. Now previously it, we put the colour tag in before the symbol because we wanted to apply it to the symbol 
and to the information between the end of pre and the beginning of post. But what we can do is cut that to after our symbol and now we can copy the colour from ship type or obviously you can insert any colour you choose paste it in there and after our symbol that we want a different colour we close this colour tag and then a separate colour tag is then opening directly after it to modify the, the contents of the label so we'll just save that so I'll show you so there you can now see our marker is a different colour to the actual information displayed in the label. I'm not suggesting you guys should use these, these colours, it's all down to personal taste, you'll find what works for you. But using these principles you can you can really uh, divide up your, your labels, make them very visually distinct from each other. So I'm going to go ahead and make the same change to this other label here. So this colour on ship type, we're going to cut that, we're going to add that after the symbol. And stealing from pilot name, we're going to take that colour, we're going to insert it at the beginning here and close it after the symbol. So once again it just adds a little bit more contrast. So playing around with different colours you can you can really get something that works for you. So here we can see our edits now. We've got a little skull and crossbones uh, before the player name and they're a different colour from each other. Got a little corporation a copyright symbol here before the Corp and the Alliance. I've put in a little kind of aeroplane symbol here to denote what the person is flying and we have our distance marker here made a little bit larger and easier to see. We've got those nested within two nice little, little uh, tidy rows. So the distance marker, basically anything you don't close in your final label uh, those effects will continue to apply to the distance marker. So if we go ahead and make distance a different colour, if we take, uh, let's just copy another colour from over here. So if we copy another colour in there and don't close it, then that colour will be applied to the distance. So there you can see the colour has changed to the kind of very light blue of this text. So you really can get quite intricate with the colour changes and edits you can make. You just need to pay a lot of attention to the order of your labels and also whether you're inserting things in the pre or post section of each label. So hopefully between this video and the last one you're able to set up your overview labels and uh, similarly these, these symbols can be applied to your tabs up here as well. And hopefully you're able to get all of this exactly to your, your taste and liking. Uh, let me know below if you have any comments, uh, requests, if you'd like me to explain something a little more clearly. And, uh, Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the usual stuff if you've uh, found the video useful. So, thanks for watching.